how do you think the, you know, the arguments went? Yeah, I mean, we're um, grateful to the court for hearing our case today. Uh, we've made our case heard, and um, we're hoping for a good You know, one of the questions that it seemed like the justices were very focused in on was, you know, is this a, uh, is your, your request um, asking a public official or elected official to do their job, you know, uh, to follow the law, or are, are you questioning the constitutionality of whether or not the, you know, um, either of these bills were, were constitutional to begin with in the first place? Um, our action is just asking the Secretary of State and the Election Commissioners to follow the law and to implement LB20, uh, re-enfranchise the voters that uh, relied on the law passed by the legislature in a bipartisan measure, no less, uh, earlier this year. Um, and, and that we find that there are no constitutional issues here, and that's the so so the secretary has that duty to follow the law. So that's the case we made before the court. And what should have the you know how, how should have this gone down? I guess what should have happened if the attorney general had questions about the constitutionality of these laws? I mean, secretary, certainly, uh, you know, as, as you may have heard, there there are other avenues that the secret that the attorney general, the secretary, could have brought it before the court because if only the court. Uh, can declare laws unconstitutional, but we're challenging the unilateral action that the secretary made, and that's what brings us to our, our mandate this action. And what's your, your biggest argument that, you know, you're not usurping the pardon board, that, you know, that the Constitution gave, or the, you know, the current laws give to the, the pardon board, that you're not usurping the pardon board? The automatic rights restoration, voting rights restoration, is just does not, it's just not a pardon. It just doesn't amount to a pardon. It doesn't violate separation of powers. There are a number of other states that have this exact same structure like Nebraska, and none of them have found uh, any kind of constitutional violation. So there's no constitutional violation. And at what point do you whittle away down, you know, if you take this this portion away from the pardon board, at what point have you stripped away actually what the pardon board does? I mean, that's just not what we're doing here. We're just talking about voting rights. And so we're just, we're just asking the secretary to to implement LB20, follow the law, follow the restoration statutes that we've had for years. In your closing, you know, um, your rebuttal, you know, what was the main point that you wanted to send to the justices? Again, that, that the secretaries follow the law. There are no constitutional violations here or issues that we need to worry about. Um, and we need a decision as soon as possible so that Nebraska voters know, have clarity before the election, and are able to register a vote in time. One of the things that you were starting to argue a little bit was the statutory authority that the legislature yeah. has on voting rights restoration. I mean, your briefs argued a little bit more than what you were able to have time to say today. How often and how long has the legislature in Nebraska been working on restoration of voting rights statutorily versus doing so through the party? As we know, our, our voter registration statute was first passed in 2005, um, and then of course again this year. Um, but I know the work uh, that is been much longer than that and, and continued through that time because you know, Nebraska supported free franchisement um, and, and to, to bring Nebraska voters, give them another right to vote back. Am I correct that the court could decide this case without getting to the question of whether or not LB20 and LB53 are constitutional or not? Uh, so, I mean, our mandamus action is we, we are not raising the constitutional issue, right? So that's Secretary of State. Uh, for the purpose of our action, we just want the Secretary of State to follow the law. We don't find any constitutional issues, so we should. From your perspective, if a elected state official or a state official of any kind can just choose to not implement state law without any second court action, what is the issue that would that could cause the folks who maybe not follow? Well, I think we look at what's already happened is that there has been just confusion and chaos across the state for Nebraska voters. Of the secretary's action, not knowing uh, you know, that their right to vote has been called into question despite the, the bipartisan legislation that was passed this year. So I think we've already seen this happen.